Welcome back to my studio. Today we are painting this adorable trio of daffodils. For the supplies that we'll need today, I am using my watercolor sketchbook, which is about five inches or five and a half inches by seven inches, cold pressed 140 pound, 100% cotton paper, a size 12 round brush, a size two round brush, a pencil, and Whatever spices you would like, we're just using the lid of that spice jar. It's about two inches in diameter, and I'm using it just to draw the perfect circle. Not that it needs to be perfect, we're having fun here. And then I'm tracing a nickel, which is about 21.1 millimeters if you're not in the US. I'm putting a little dot in the center of each circle, of each of the bigger um, circles. So for the side daffodils, it doesn't look like it's in the center of the little circle. It's in the center of the larger uh, outer circle. And then I'm drawing um, six lines to divide that circle into six pieces of pie. So each piece is about equal. It doesn't have to be perfect. I just tried to make it as even as possible for this tutorial. You can think of it as like a, a snowflake with those six lines um, or cutting up a pie evenly in six different pieces. And then once you erase those lines to lighten them up with a kneaded eraser, I am painting in with the um, cadmium deep yellow wash, which is about five brushfuls of water and one brushful of the cadmium deep yellow. You can use whatever yellow you like. This yellow just happens to work well, in my opinion, with this flower. Um, and then I'm using that cadmium or orange and dropping it in just to the tips while the petals are still wet. I do the same thing for the next flower where we are painting in just three of those six petals. That way we can layer the next set of petals and it will have a really pretty effect. And again, it's with that cadmium deep yellow. And then I'm charging each still wet petal with the cadmium orange. And I'm playing around with it a little bit on the edges of the petal. You don't need to do that, just but you can while it's still wet. You can manipulate it, play around with it a little bit. And then for the third flower, we're doing the same thing. We're just painting in three of the petals. And this time I'm showing you a different way to go about it where I'm painting the bottom petal and then two in the sides. But we're using the same paint, the cadmium deep yellow wash, and then using a bit of that cadmium orange. You can use whatever orange you have. It doesn't have to be the same. It just happens to be what I used. But using that orange to charge the still wet petals and then while those are all drying, I'm starting on the bees. For the bees, I'm using the Cadmium Deep Yellow Wash. And it's just three little petals of yellow, the fattest one in the middle, um, a little bit smaller for the fuzzy bee bottom, and the thinnest little petal of yellow is up at the top by the head. We're doing the same thing for the two bees. So each bee is just three little puddles of yellow, the fattest in the center and um, the smallest up at the top by the head. Now that our first initial petals on our daffodils are dry, we can go in with the next three petals using that same cadmium deep yellow wash. And while those petals are still wet, we'll go ahead and charge them again, just like we did those first three petals. Don't worry about getting the petals to look exactly the same. I've been painting for so long that it just kind of happens naturally that the petals look pretty much the same, but they actually look more natural and fun if they're a little bit different. So please loosen up with this, have fun. So 
So after you charge each tip with that cadmium orange, you can go on to your next flower with that uh, same cadmium deep yellow wash and putting in the next three petals. I'm doing a curve up one side of the line and a curve up the other side of the line and then filling them in. And then while the petals are still wet, charging the tips with the cadmium orange. If you're working with a paper that is not 100% cotton, you may need to charge your petal while it's still they're still wet one at a time because that cellulose paper or the paper that is not made out of 100% um, cotton tends to dry more quickly. So you might want to paint in one petal at a time and then charge that one petal, the very tip of it, just adding in that dab of orange before the petal dries so that it will dry with that really nice uh, wet on wet look where the colors dry softly into one another. For the stems, I'm using a combination of emerald green and burnt sienna. You can use whatever green you would like. I just happen to be um, in the emerald green and burnt sienna uh, mixture kick. I'm really enjoying this really pretty botanical color that it's making. As you can see, I'm not doing the stem in just one easy line down. Some days I find I have more difficulty with straight lines than others. <laughs> So I'll have to go back in and just do it little bit by little bit, which is perfectly fine. You can also soak it back up like I did with a paper towel if you feel like it's gotten too dark. And then just add water to that line again so that you can add a nice shadow of ultramarine blue or whatever blue you would like right underneath the flower so it looks like the sun is hitting the flowers and you have a bit of shadow. For this next flower, I'm doing it a little bit differently. Daffodils, they have that part of their stem that um, goes off at an angle. And I'm trying to represent that here with just, it's not quite a 90 degree angle. It's a little bit less than 90 degrees. And I'm making it a bit thicker than the stem. So it looks like that part of that daffodil that has that a papery texture to it. It's a little bit of a different color right by the neck of the daffodil. And I'm using that same emerald green and burnt sienna mix. I'm leading that paint down towards the edge of the paper. Decide it's too dark, blot it up with my paper towel. Feel free to do that. Don't be scared to do that. Just make sure your paper towel is clean. And then I'm adding some uh, water on top of my line so that I'm able to add a bit of raw sienna while the stem is still wet to represent that uh, papery part of the daffodil right by the neck. I think it's called the spathe. Because the stem is still wet, it's blending nicely together to make kind of an olive brownie olive green. For the next stem, I'm using that same combination of emerald green and burnt sienna. I'm using the very tip of my paintbrush to make that finer line and then dabbing in some ultramarine blue into that still wet stem underneath the flower and then at the base of the stem as well. And then I also go ahead and put some of that into the other two flowers as well just on the base so it looks like a bit of shadow. While we're waiting for the stems to dry, we're going to work on our bees. I'm using a watered down wash of the black that came with my set. I'm using the Rosa Gallery Botanical 28 colors. You can use whatever black that you would like. You can also make your own black by mixing a yellow, a red, and a blue together. 
Just make sure that at first you're using a watered down version. Maybe try uh, three brushfuls of water to one of the black that you have. That way you'll have more of a gray, a lighter, a lighter color at first so that you can go in and you can add uh, shades of gray or black to it to make it look a little more three-dimensional. If you go in right away with a very solid, thick, opaque black, you won't get that delicate watercolor look that you're probably after. So what I'm doing is just filling in the space between those three puddles of yellow and then adding on a little rounded head. I then add a little more paint right from the pan of color, that straight paint into the wash to make it a little bit darker to have a bit of a shadowy underside for the bees to make them look like they're a bit three-dimensional. So for both bees, I'm just adding that darker, thicker, more opaque black to the underside of them. Um, and then I will pull it down a bit to make some wiggly legs, which you can also do in a lighter water, more watered down wash of the black. It doesn't need to be uh, darker, but just make sure your legs are not sticking out straight. Make sure they're a little bit wavy that they have a little bend to them so they look more natural. I then, with my number two brush, I should have mentioned, I'm using the number two brush now, am attempting to put in some antenna. I had to scrub it out the first time with water and pick them back up with a paper towel. If you need to do that, just wait for it to dry completely. Otherwise, when you go back in to put your antenna back in, You'll have a little cloud of gray above the head as the wet paper will make that paint spread. So make sure it's bone dry before you attempt to put them back in again. And then for the wings, I'm having a bit of a shaky hand day. So I'm drawing them in with pencil at first and then you can leave them just in pencil. You don't need to go after that over that delicate part with your paintbrush. But if you would like to go over that delicate part with your paintbrush, um, I'm just using a bit more of that wash of that black. I dab my brush on the paper towel first to make sure that I don't have too much water and that it's not too dark. You can also test it on a little bit of scrap paper. And then for that very transparent part of the wing, I'm using just water at first and then a teeny tiny bit of that very watered down wash that I test on the paper. You can see I go back in quite a few times while painting these bees with a paper towel to pick up paint and um, that's just part of watercolor. Don't be scared to pick it up with with a paper towel, just make sure you're not picking up your entire bee. So you might even want to use a Q-tip to go back in and pick up little delicate parts so that you're not picking up too much of your painting. Once that black area is completely dry, we're putting in the underside shadow of the bee for the yellow part using a wash of the cadmium orange. I was pretty happy with it, but I wanted it to be just a bit brighter of an orange, so I did end up dabbing into the cadmium orange straight from the pan as well, and um, tapping that into that wet area of the bee's belly just to add a little bit more uh, brightness of color. Once the bees have been completed, we're going to go back into our daffodils. The daffodil flowers are now completely bone dry. 
You can touch them, and if they're still a little bit cool to the touch, they're still wet. So you want to make sure your paper is not cool to the touch and that it's very dry before going to this next step. I am using a wash of the Cadmium Deep Yellow. I followed the circular outline of the uh, nickel that we, we traced in the beginning. So I can still see that circle underneath my daffodil petals and I'm creating a wiggly line following that entire circle and then filling that in, painting that in with that um, yellow wash and then tapping around the outside of that filled in squiggly circle first with the cadmium orange and then going back in with the cadmium red light and tapping that in all the way around as well. So that way you have the cadmium orange um, blending in in a very pretty wet and wet soft blend to that yellow wash. And then you have on top of that the cadmium red light also blending in very nicely into that cadmium orange so that you have the three colors all blending in together delicately to create that um, the circle, the trumpet of the daffodil. For the next daffodil, I'm doing the same thing where I'm using that wash of cadmium deep yellow, making a squiggly lined circle filling it in with that same cadmium deep yellow and then going right into my pan of cadmium orange um, getting that on the tip of my brush and then just dabbing it in all around that wiggly uh, outline of the trumpet of the daffodil after dabbing in the orange Again, we're going to go into that cadmium red light and again uh, dab in the cadmium red light all around the wiggly outline of the trumpet. For the final daffodil, we're doing it the same way with that wiggly circle for with the wash of the cadmium deep yellow. And then going into the cadmium orange, tapping it all around those wiggles so that they're blending nicely wet on wet with that soft look. And then going into that cadmium red light again and dabbing that in so that you have those three colors, the cadmium deep yellow, the cadmium orange, and the cadmium light all blending beautifully in together for that soft wet on wet look. For the leaves, I'm using that same combination of emerald green and raw sienna. I mixed it up into um, a wash, about five brushfuls of water, and then one brushful of the emerald green and one brushful of the raw sienna. You can mix it up and then test it on a scrap piece of paper. Uh, you can use any green that you want. This just happens to be the green that I'm really in love with at the moment. <laughs> So after mixing it up, to start with your first leaf, I tend to put less pressure at first and then more pressure on the petal or on the leaf towards the center and then less pressure as you lift up. That way you have um, a bit of a thinner line at first and then it gets thicker towards the middle 
and then as you lift up kind of like a plane taking off lift up gently you'll have that thinner little point up at the top as you can see on mine I do have that little bit of paint that pulls up at the top of these leaves and you can soak that back up with your brush if you want to just dry off your brush and then soak it back up if you don't like that look um, for the daffodils I do happen to like that look as when I look at the daffodils in my garden I do see that a lot of them have a bit of a darker or a bit of a lighter tip on the top of the leaves and so I'm really enjoying the look of it for this painting if you have too much paint on your brush uh, towards the base of the paper or the top you can see um, drying off your brush and using it as a sponge to lift it back up really works well. So now I'm putting in my last few leaves. You can put them in however you would like. I find it helpful to draw them in lightly with the pencil so that I have a line to follow, kind of a guide. But if you want to do them uh, freehand without sketching first, that is also fun. I like to do that as well in some projects. For this one, I did sketch them in. As when I'm on video, I feel a little bit, <laughs> kind of like a stage fright. I feel a little bit nervous going into it. So to relax myself a little bit more, I do sketch them in first. And if you're a beginner, that might help you relax as well to sketch those lines in first so that you have a line to follow. One thing that I forgot to mention is I waited for the stems to dry so that I could have the leaves crisscrossing the stems and them create that beautiful layered look without the paint bleeding into the stems. So now I'm putting in the very last leaf and I'm starting in with a light pressure and then pressing down a little bit more and then lifting up just like a plane lifts up during takeoff. And you can see how I crossed on top of the leaf next to it which it was dry enough so that it just left a layered line on top if it was very wet, it would have bled into it, and that's not the look that I was going for. So you might want to wait for each leaf to dry, maybe use a hair dryer, before putting in your next leaves. So for this very last step of the daffodils, I am using a bright green. In this set, the Rosa Gallery Botanical set is actually called bright green. <laughs> but you can use whatever uh, lighter green that you have in your set. And I uh, have some water on my brush so that it's watered down a little bit. You can make a little wash of it if you would like. And I also waited for the trumpet of the flowers to be completely dry before doing this. Otherwise it would have spread out into that yellow paint and it would have made just um, a mess. So you want to wait for your flowers to dry and then using that watered down bright green, put a little bit in the center of each circle and then put in just a dot of ultramarine blue or another dark blue that you might have for that very center teeny tiny bit. You may want to wait till that light green is dry so that the dark blue doesn't spread out and cover the whole light green area. Thank you so much for joining me today. I cannot tell you how happy it makes me to see that I am connecting with people, that you are enjoying my paintings, that you're giving it a try on your own. If you would like to share your paintings with me, you can tag me on my social media at Elizabeth Bostick on Instagram or at Elizabeth Bostick Art on Facebook. I hope that you have a wonderful rest of your day, and I'll see you next time.